Welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast of Wake Up Church. We've been asleep for too long. This is your host, Dr. Rosalind Best. Please visit the website of bestlegacyfoundation.org for opportunities for scholarships, mentorships, and a chance to leave a lasting legacy. This is a series of podcasts, six of six, dealing with doctrines of devils, and we're going to address the spirit of confusion. Let's get it. In this particular uh, verse of scripture, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. And the main portion I want us to focus on is casting down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. To cast down is not accepting the devil's thoughts, suggestions, visions. It is a spiritual weapon when we cast down those things, that we must use these, this weapon to be victorious over the enemy. We must learn to actively fight to maintain God's vision for you. You must only accept imaginations or thoughts that line up with the word of God. Too many people have been beat down by the enemy with Overmuch sorrow, grief, disappointment, betrayal, deception. And you need to draw a line in the sand and declare that this has to stop and enough is enough. In the words of Elmer Fudd, enough is enough. You have to know when you've decided, um, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And when you do, you need to change up. Get out of your defense mode, take back that ball, play effective offense, and gain a victory and win. A liar cannot tarry in God's presence, so we cannot be affiliated with lies. We can't pretend and call a thing that's not a thing. (laughs) As Iyana Vanzak can say, call a thing a thing. But When we speak lies and expect the truth, that's inconsistent with God's plan and God's alignment. If I call you what you want to now identify yourself as, which is opposite of your genetic identity, I'm speaking lies over your God-given identity. And now I'm in agreement with hell instead of in alignment and agreement with heaven. Satan is the originator of the spirit of confusion. He has ushered in a set of lies, false practices to get folks confused. We had a Christian school and there was one little boy. I was asking all the the elementary or middle school kids, what did they want to be when they grow up? And he said, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? He says, I want to be a shrug. I said, you want to be a what? I want to be a shrug. Now, can you imagine if we had allowed that child to go on with that lie, um, with that skewed perspective is what I'll call it, a skewed perspective that was not consistent anatomically, spiritually in any way with what God had called him to be. If we'd start saying, ooh, you've got real nice wheels on today, Lester. When he has two feet. Oh, I like your headlight. Oh, you've got a nice horn. When his headlight is his forehead. You see, we can't pretend like we don't see what's going on. It's like the emperor with no clothes on. He's naked. But yet we're pretending like, oh, I love your outfit. When did we become acceptable perpetrating a lie? If a liar can't stand in God's presence, what are we doing when we are condoning a lie or acknowledging a lie as if it's the truth? God help us today. The world is in a ball of confusion. Walking in what you call your truth is a brazen lie if it is inconsistent with the word of God. Let me tell you something about God. God has never been and will never be confused. He is not reckless. He is divine. He has his kingdom 
in order. And he knows intricate details about every single soul he created. He leaves nothing to chance. He made you to be exactly what he intended for you to be. Now, your fake ID is an expression of a reality created by a lesser God, Lucifer. Lucifer did not create you, but he will harass you into submission by allowing a demon to dictate your supposed new identity. These are doctrines of devils that can, that want to be called or referred to as them, they, or us, which is grammatically correct because demons are not alone. They attach themselves to the life of that human. So it is a group when we are referring to they, them, or us. The only problem is we're not supposed to use English language to acknowledge the demon in action instead of casting down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. When we acknowledge the demons, they feel empowered. Being socially accepted by society does not mean it is spiritually acknowledged or accepted or recognized by the Most High God. What does God call you? The scripture says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, Before I formed you in the womb of your mother, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. What does God call you? What does God see when he sees you? Let's look at the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 17. In the last days, and I can certainly agree and believe that we are entering the last days. Some explicit details God wants you to know. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people, on all flesh. Hallelujah. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And old men will, shall dream dreams. Again, what does God see when he sees you? He saw you when you were a zygote. He saw you before you were ever formulated. He saw you. He knew your purpose. He knew your agenda. And he knew he planned to use sons and daughters to prophesy in the last days. If you are not a son, daughter, or child of God, and you would like to be able to accept the gift of salvation, it is a declaration of what you believe. And if you say, I believe in my heart that God raised his son Jesus from the dead and that Jesus died for my sin, I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, and I want him to enter my life, my heart, my mind, my body, and my soul, that I may fulfill the destiny and purpose of God for my life in my generation. I want to serve the purpose of God while I am alive. Lord, let me live my life for something that will last eternal and forever. 
and let me delight in doing your will. There are prophets out there being entangled with gender identity, being confused with deception, being confused in this world system, being confused with the demonic forces of hell that want to cause them to straggle and stray from the purpose of God. But I speak to you today as a prophet of the Most High God that you will exercise and walk in the divine purpose for your birth preconception when God knew you and only you. <laughs> May you walk in the destiny of God. May you fulfill every single purpose, every single line that he has assigned for you. May you no longer stray, straggle, and be deflected and deterred from what God has set you in this earth to be and to do. Your agenda came from him. Your purpose comes from him. Your blessings come from him. Your life, your fulfillment of your life, the satisfaction of your life comes from the joy of the Lord is your strength. When you know the Lord, there is a supernatural strength inside of you that you know you are taken care of, that you know you are protected, that you know he is with you. That is what accepting the gift of salvation gives you. The bridge between you and God is no longer a barrier, but you accept Christ and you walk across that bridge and you are now accepted as a part of the family of Christ, the body of Christ, a member of his body. God loves himself some you. He would never trick you and tell you you are a boy and give you the mind of a girl. Cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, the knowledge of who God knows you are. You are a child of God with a purpose. You are a voice of God in this barren land. You have the encrypted message that comes from the Holy Spirit on how to help your friends on a college campus to get to accept Christ, how to help your neighbors who are bogged down in depression, oppression, and don't know the beauty of holiness, don't know the righteousness that comes from accepting Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. You are the answer and antidote to curing what is ailing so many people around you. You are the remedy, my dear, my son. You hold the remedy. Accept the positioning of God over your life, in your life. You will never, ever disappoint God. I came to the Lord with a dime bag in my purse. No intent to accept Jesus I didn't know I needed Jesus. I knew I was hungry and thirsty for something that I couldn't get from the marijuana. It gave me a nice buzz, but I needed something that would satisfy my soul. That day when I accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, there wasn't an altar call. I just knew this was an experience between me and God. And I said, Lord, if you're real, show me you're real. And he did exactly that. I knew I was loved. I felt surrounded by an unconditional love that I've never experienced in my life. And God wants to give it to you and everything that you are craving for. It's not in a man. It's not in loud. It's not in a degree. It's in Christ Jesus. And he's available right now. You just accept the gift of salvation and ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit that you will know the life and purpose that God created you for. I love you, and God does too.